Well, we finally made it to the field. Uh, came out here this morning after we got combine all ready to roll and found beans so wet that you could mash them flat in between your fingers. And that was about 11 o'clock. And then we said, no, we're not going to pick them that wet. So we went and worked on something that was messed up on the combine. Cousin was telling me about it. I mean, he got stuck. I'll go show you a bunch of ruts out here in this field. But right now I'm too delighted about showing you that the uh, combine's rolling picking beans. But uh, all the times that you get stuck on these old combines that got these variable speed belt drives, you can really do a number on the belts, stretch them out. And that's what had happened on the belts on the combine. Cousin was telling me that he just didn't even have reverse. If things were stressed out, strained out uh, in the mud, he just didn't have any reverse. So we got the book out and looked at the procedure for setting those belts back up right. The top one was stretched really bad, and we nailed it. I was delighted with that. Got them back like they were supposed to be, almost factory perfect. And we celebrated that for a minute or two, and then decided, let's go see if the beans had dried down in. It was cloudy here until about, uh, about 1.30, and then the uh, sun came out and the clouds moved out, and you could feel where we were working on the combine, I could feel the sun on my back, and I said, let's go check them. Well, it's about 3.35 when we were out here checking them, and I started getting some beans that when I went to mash them between my fingers, they hurt my fingers. That's a good sign. And then when I put them back there on my back teeth to bite them, I got that crack noise uh, in my ear. And that was a real good sign. Now, the beans are still, you know, got some moisture in them, so I'm going to call them at somewhere around uh, 14 and a half to 15 percent. But I really, really, really did not want to wait any longer. I'm losing test weight. There was a noticeable difference between uh, the first load that I hauled and the second load I hauled. And I just don't want to get into picking beans in late January with super light test weight. We were marginal, we missed it uh, last year by a tenth of a point for getting docked on test weight. And that's more expensive than moisture. Because basically what they're telling you is you're, you brought them a real low quality, low grade product. I love this zoom on this camera. And I like watching that little combine pick beans. Yeah, he's uh, rolling along slow. It's better to roll along slow and pick beans than have to stop and clog ahead. The header is too big for that combine. It really ought to be a 10-foot head. But it works. It's what we got. It's what we use. Uh, and I'm happy with it. Well, I'm going to fire up my victory cigar. And he's staying up real good down here on this side. We'll ride down here and I'll show you some of the uh, bad get stuck problems that we had. Yeah, he's way over there and we're way over here.
All right, I'm out of breath from running over here to catch up with him. I'm on foot. Uh, but this is the Allen field. And cousin got into this last Sunday. Now walk over here and take a look at what I was talking about getting stuck. But that gives you an idea how much is done. And there's still right good a little bit right there. That back corner over there where it slopes off, that's gonna be tricky. And he's headed down towards the wet spot, so float combine float. Let me show you what I was talking about getting stuck. All right, he just did that today, but he walked on through it. We fixed that variable speed, and he's got back good power from the uh, engine to the drive train. But this over here is uh, where he got stuck so bad last week. Then you can see water standing right there. We'll zoom in on it. That's water in that. That's a pretty deep trench. And just a muddy mess here. See right there. And this is like one of about five locations that are like that. And what he did just now to get that up there, and I approve wholeheartedly, we won't worry about that little spot of beans. It ain't worth getting combine stuck. But he went around it and swept back in the front of it there and got them. Now, what's going on over there? He's already made his way down to the uh, real wet, soft, soupy spot, and he's climbing back up the hill. Yeah, fixing that variable speed did the trick. The top belt was stretched really bad, and the bottom belt was just sloppy loose because of it. But I think we can crawl through this now. coming in off that platform. Didn't want to go up the feeder house. Cousin saw it starting to come back over the top of the platform auger and he stopped the combine. And we both went to play it, it was clear, and it did. Real pleased with that, he's still rolling. All right, we're way over here at the corner of the field. You can see that's like the edge of it there, runs down the line. And first time he got stuck, he was in that far corner down there headed this way. And he got out of that and came down here and tried this side since it's a lot higher and it didn't go too good. You can see right here there's water standing in that and water in that and you can see that. And where I'm headed down here, you can see this spot here. And these, these ruts are deep enough that you're up on the rim of the tire. And you can see there's uh, kind of pull in here, there. That's not dual tires. That's getting in and backing out and trying again. Total determination. And let's see if the zoom will give it to us. We go on down here. Yeah. You see the dark spots coming up in about the center of the frame? That's some pretty serious ruts down there where it finally said I'm stuck and the 4020 went in here and got him out. Uh, his son was here to do that. I was at work. 